Hi everybody, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. Thanks for being here today. Hope you're doing well and that you got a good sleep last night because today's video is about insomnia and about dealing with lack of sleep and the challenges that we face as we get a little older. Now, I, I'm, I'm recording this video today because I had a particularly restless night last night. Um, I have, like many people, got into a rhythm of waking up quite early in the morning and, um, you know, just not knowing really what to do, whether to go back to sleep, whether to try to get up and be productive and then go to bed early that night. You know, I've kind of, I mean, I, I'm usually doing pretty well, but last night I woke up about three and I just couldn't, it wasn't that I couldn't get back to sleep, it's I didn't want to go back to sleep. It just felt like I had things to do. It was like I, I wanted to do some projects or I wasn't even sure what it was but that was my situation now one of our blog bloggers Barbara Younger wrote this article which is so relevant to this conversation that I thought I would actually um, just feed on it and, um, and and share her thoughts because I actually um, agree with her and I ended up doing some things that are actually on her her list here but the point is she she's like me she wakes up and if she can't get back to sleep in 20 minutes or so it's like well just get up <laughs> just get up and just do something go in and and um, you know fill your time Time with something useful and um, or something not just useful but inspirational and if you can get back to sleep that's fine but um, many people cannot do that so here's some creative suggestions um, where she says the middle of the night is a great time for creativity and I actually agree with her after having put some of this into practice so first thing she says now this is a kind of an interesting one I've got I think there's about um, six or seven of them here is celebrate kindness when you wake up in the middle of the night and you cannot go back to sleep, just sit down and think about all the things that you're grateful for. I mean, it may not be that you can get back to sleep. It may be that you're tired. It may be that you're worried about um, something. But, you know, just go back, go over to your cupboard where you keep like, you know, beautiful cards and, and postcards and just write some notes to people, telling them just, just a simple note, just thinking about you late at night. Hope that you're doing great and, you know, just know how important you are in my life. You know, use crayons and markers and stickers and washi tape and whatever you've got that you really, really love and decorate the cards and the letters and just celebrate kindness in your heart. Don't be beating yourself up for, you know, not being able to produce and, and get, you know, go back to sleep or whatever. Just, you know, just relax and send cards. I mean, if you don't want to send physical, do it on your computer. Just send some little emails and Make, make, extend your love outwards. The second thing she talks about is refreshments. Okay, refreshments. I have mentioned this before that I have this thing about cheese and crackers. I just like cheese and little crackers. And whenever I can't get to sleep, I always break all the rules. I know you're not supposed to eat after seven o'clock, but I take little crackers and cheese and I nibble them. And I, it's not that that causes me to wake up. It's just, it just soothes me. And she says, look, if you're going to have a, a snack, Barbara gives some advice. If you wake up in the middle of the night and you're going to have a snack, put a plate there. De you know, get a plate, a napkin, you know, put the food on the plate, celebrate it. Don't just drink, you know, your water or from a bottle. Or just, just put it in a glass, sit there with your plate on at your bed, in, in your bed or, or you know, uh, at a table and just savor it. You know, consider hot milk if you have an opportunity, an option rather than something that's going to keep you awake, like coffee. But have a beverage that you love and enjoy. Next thing is list making. Okay, hands up who is a list maker. I love making lists. And I do, I mean, I was just, you know, looking at the list of things I want to do today. I've got to pick this up. I've got to drop something off. I've got to make an appointment. I make a call. And um, I love lists. So I start sometimes in the middle of the night making my lists. Always keep a notepad by my side, do you, with a pen, and even to keep uh, track of your dreams, I always keep a notepad by my bed, just found it as a habit, I've done it for years, but um, another thing she says to do is, why don't we use this time to go for a little journey down memory lane, you know, go and just write a list of places you've lived, um, you know, clothes that you used to wear when you were little, uh, outfits that you loved, um, significant events, a list of friends, you know, people who, if you really had to choose your 10, 20, you know, contacts, acquaintances, people, who they are, just write them down. So rather than just write lists of, you know, go to the grocery store, pick up garbage bags, whatever, whatever you've got to do, you know, just do lists of that are heartfelt and are meaningful. Um, your 50 favorite songs of all time, your favorite colors in order, your, your favorite makeup products. 
Um, what else? I mean, you know, you, you get the idea. You can you can just fill uh, pages with just lists of wonderful things that bring back memories and, um, you know, just make you feel cozy and warm and and you love yourself for it. It's just a, a precious thing. Um, another thing is called creative Googling. This, I actually quite like this one because I do do this. This is my one of my things too. And she says she just randomly, this is Barbara, our, the author of this article, she just randomly chooses a topic to research. She goes, I now finally know why the sky is blue. <laughs> it's like, why is the sky blue? Um, you know, but just if you have something you want to follow, a, a, a chain and, and, and discover new things. She says she's gone, she's learned about the sex life of Victorian women. She's learned about the invention of the vacuum cleaner. And I actually did some research on the life of Gloria Steinem and also, um, uh, Victor, uh, what was her name, Georgia O'Keeffe. I love Georgia O'Keeffe's paintings. And also um, just, you know, art in general. I'm really into art and music. So I'll often just, just go into Google, you know, 10 most famous paintings of all time. Or, you know, music to, to soothe your soul. Or just type in random stuff. We are so lucky that we have the ability to do this. I was actually, we did an, I did an article recently on things that have changed in the last 40 years. And I was remembering in the video that my mom, uh, like your mom, and didn't have a, didn't have a clue what an, a cell phone was. I mean, even, you know, when I was just starting off as a mom, I didn't have an internet. We didn't have the internet. It just wasn't in existence in 79 and, and 80, and it was just not there. Um, but the things that we had to do, anyway, the point being that um, we know actually could have information at our fingertips and we should use it because it's fun and it's a thing to do if you can't sleep. I mean, yes, it may activate your brain and you may never go back to sleep again, you know, till the next night, but it's just, if you're gonna just sit there and worry about it, just get up and do something. And insomnia can, as, you know, can be this creative outlet for you if you really, really want uh, it to be. Um, oh yes, the junk drawer. <laughs> Clean out the junk drawer. Why not? It's like four o'clock in the morning, you're sitting there by yourself or your husband's asleep or your partner and it's like, okay, I'm just gonna get up and See what I can find in the junk drawer. It's like, um, I just bought for my grandson a collection of miscellaneous Lego, like Lego pieces, which he, he loves. And oh my gosh, the things he's created with these weird and wonderful mix, mismatched sets. But do, do the same in your junk um, drawer. She says she's found like, you know, I don't know, what did she find? A pencil from the New York World's Fair. A pacifier. She says her oldest, her youngest child is 30. She found a pacifier. Uh, a missing earring. Um, so anyway, use sleepless nights to actually fill those gaps of knowledge and uh, curiosity and clean out your drunk drawer, junk drawer. I think that's a really cool mission. I've actually done that, to be honest, several times. And I'm pretty much now, I think my junk drawers are organized, so I cannot lose anything. Well, that's the theory. But um, maybe you've got some techniques for, for cleaning out cupboards and junk drawers, as long as you're not waking someone else up, you know, with banging around. But if you're by yourself, which a lot of us are, you can just sit and uh, go through your junk drawer and sort. What else? Oh, yeah. And, and if, in uh, Barbara's article, she gives some examples. So check out the article. It's really, really fun. Um, and basically, I think what she's saying here is, okay, we get frustrated when we can't go back to sleep, you know, but there's joy in the night. There's things that we can discover about ourselves. There are invent, uh, discoveries we can find about the world. I cannot remember the name of the gentleman. It's like James somebody who wrote a book on the, the night and about as we get older, our night patterns shift. And he is a Jungian psychologist. So his um, explanation is that there are things coming to us that we need to work with, we need to resolve. So, um, you know, it's like this, um, what does he say? I think he says your demons. I think he actually uses that word. Your demons come out to get your attention. Hey, remember me? You know, that memory that you didn't want to think about for the last 10 years? I'm here. Let's think about it. <laughs> and it's like, or let's talk about it. Um, you know, it's like that little voice inside of you that sometimes says, you know, I'm going to just go a little deeper now with that thought. It's come back to me. It's time. And it's helpful. And I think that that's the mystery of the night. It's just as sometimes there's a task also that you don't want to do, like polish something or organize something. This is the time to do it and to use the time to absorb and reflect and and just discover parts of yourself that you maybe didn't know. And maybe then, maybe you'll be tired at six o'clock and go back for an hour to sleep and maybe a dream will come that will soothe an edge or soften a memory. And that's what it's all about. As we get older, I think that we actually 
have that opportunity for ourselves. So do you deal with insomnia? Do you suffer from insomnia? What do you do? What are your techniques? I would love to know actually, because I'm, I'm sure this is going to continue for me and for many of you. So I'd love to know what you're doing to, um, to find time during those hours that you're awake to be creative or to enjoy a thought or a memory. Uh, just share your, share your experiences. It's always good fun. We're here at 60 and me to, to give you that um, support. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. That would be wonderful because then YouTube will share it with more people. And also, if you haven't subscribed to this channel already, please do that and press that notification. I do four um, videos every week and I don't promote them anywhere except here on YouTube. So this is where you'll find me. Okay, everybody, have a super day. Uh, stay well, sleep tight, and we'll talk again soon. Bye-bye for now.